Hi everyone. Welcome to Adventures with Raven and Rowley. I'm Raven and this is Rowley. We're converting a cargo trailer into a travel trailer while living full time in a fifth wheel RV. Last week I talked about the cargo trailer update number two. I showed you what was going down. <laughs> this week I talk about cooking while living in an RV or while camping. If you're curious, please join us on this journey and continue to watch. Comments and questions and suggestions would be appreciated too. This week I talk about cooking while camping or living in an RV. You need to decide what type of cooking you're going to do. I think that's the primary thing is that you have to really, in order to get prepared for this, you need to decide what you're going to do. Not only what kind of vehicle you have, and it, it really all depends upon each other, okay? If you're in an RV of any type, you have a stove and a refrigerator. You can cook on cook and shop just like in a sticks and bricks or if you were living in an apartment or whatever you could probably fit a week's worth of food at the minimum in, in a smaller RV. If you're boondocking you have to bring your fuel to run these things the refrigerator and the stove with you if you're in an RV. If you plug in at a park then all you have to do is bring your propane or you can really run everything on electric they supply it. If you're in a teardrop or vehicle of some type and where you cook outside of your rig, you'll need a stove or a and a refrigerator unless you choose not to have a stove and a refrigerator. I mean, you know, <laughs> if you don't have a stove and a refrigerator or a stove or a refrigerator, you know, however it goes need to cook you could choose your cooking style I mean if you if you're primarily into salads and sandwiches well why do you need a stove you know uh, if you're into soups and sandwiches and stuff well you could have <clears throat> a stove but you don't necessarily need a refrigerator and the same thing with the sandwiches and salad you just need some place to store it and most of them will stay outside of the refrigerator for a day or two. Suppose you, you're, you're into soups and sandwiches, well you'll need a stove in order to cook the soup, heat up the soup or whatever. Vegetarian or vegan, keto, you know, meat lover, are you into stir fries? You need to decide what kind of cooking you really need to do, what kind of style you have, okay? Suppose you can't cook or you don't like to cook, uh, what about campfires? Well, consider what you would have to do if there's a fire ban in your area. How are you going to cook? You know. So then you have to acquire the tools to match your style. If you cook si outside over a fire pit, uh, you need appropriate cookware. Cast iron works really well, but it's heavy and it's bulky. Personally, I'm not a fire pit cooker. I'm not a barbecuer. I'm, I, I'm not into fire, cooking outside over a fire. Does not excite me in the slightest, either. Okay. Uh, although I do use cast iron pots and things because I like them. They cook well. I have a solar oven. Now, the problem with solar ovens is you can't cook in the shade. <laughs> you can't cook when the clouds are coming over. You can't cook in the rain. Uh, you know, things like that. And if you're going to use a solar cook cooker to boil water or even to sterilize water, it's going to take some time. At least two or three times as long as it would take you on top of a, a stove or a fire pit or something of the sort. But it can be done. And you don't need a fire for that. You just need some sunlight. 
Now you can always use a propane stove. I personally want a propane. I want an oven that sits on top of the propane stove to use when I can't use my solar cooker. The nice thing about the solar cooker is that um, it, it's not hot in the house. It doesn't produce any steam inside. Nothing is in the house. It's all outside. So you don't have to worry about steam in there and, and humidity in your small rig or in your car and that kind of stuff. But you have to have a lot of time to allow for it to cook. Um, things will take usually twice as long as, as they would in a regular oven. Cooking on a propane stove is just like cooking in the house. It takes just as long. The only difference is you need propane. And you can take it anywhere, and you can cook inside or outside with a propane stove. Just carry it in or carry it out, you know. On a, you could cook also on a wood stove. As I said, campfires don't turn me on, but a wood stove, it's not a bad deal. There are different types of wood stove. stoves. You know, there's rocket stoves. Uh, they use, they're very small, they use a tiny bit of fuel. You don't need huge logs to work with it. Um, of course, you can get a regular wood stove, you know, a camp stove, for instance, if you like live in a tent or something of the sort, or you're converting a cargo trailer and you want to put a wood stove in it. You can get a small, regular, ordinary, everyday wood stoves and cook on top of that. And then there's things like the Biolite stove that will also charge your phone while you're while you're cooking and then if you're really not into cooking you could use something like this teacup that plugs into your car now this boils water really fast um, you could use it for making tea coffee uh, ramen soup things like that if you're into that kind of a thing and there are a lot of different kinds of appliances that come with the, the plug that you can plug it into your car. So there are methods of cooking. I could plug that actually into my Jackery solar generator, my little teeny Jackery 240. So I also think that you should plan for different conditions. I mean, suppose you want to make a cup of tea. I always want to make a cup of tea. I drink a lot of black tea. I drink the good old-fashioned black pico tea, the stuff full of caffeine, because I figure why drink tea if you're not going to get the buzz, right? If you want to make a cup of tea, well, you could do it, on, it depends upon your conditions, you know. Uh, it's different for me now. I mean, right now I could just plug in the teapot and boil some water and make a cup of tea, you know, no big deal. But suppose I was out in the middle of nowhere and I was living in the cargo trailer. Well, I could use this teacup, plug it into my jackery. I could use my Coleman stove with a little teapot. Um, I could do things like solar tea, put some tea bags and water and whatnot and stick it out in the sun and let it cook it up that way. Plus it takes a long time and that's the middle of the day and I want my tea first thing in the morning, just like most people want their coffee, you know. But I suspect that it's going to be different for me living in the cargo trailer as opposed to living in the fifth wheel. Because living in the fifth wheel is like living in an apartment, you know. And then there's the types of food, you know. I carry things like powder soup. This makes us is a family size. These bear creeks are just wonderful. But they're all, this one is all powdered. But there's only me. And it makes soup for eight people. So what I do is I take a quarter cup and uh, out of the package. And so this will serve me for four meals. I also have emergency food packets. Oops. It's these kind of thing. This one is a breakfast skillet, shredded potatoes and scrambled eggs mixed with pork, sausage, peppers, and onions. And it's freeze-dried, a lot of freeze-dried food. If you're on a tiny budget, 
and you don't have um, any way of, of keeping things refrigerated. A package of these, you can get a 30-day supply of foods, not only just breakfast. I bought breakfast, and then I bought uh, lunch and dinner, and then I bought dinner package, but a pail is a 30-day supply that lasts 25 years. So if you're on a small budget, you can get a 30-day supply of lunch and dinner, for instance, for about a hundred bucks. Um, and that'll, that'll do you pretty good. I mean, and of course, you can always augment with little packs of spam, and things like that. And so you don't have to be totally constrained. I mean, I do things like sardines. It's really good. Very healthy. There's these packages. This is service for one. These don't last 25 years, but they're good for if you're shopping, you want something to eat, you're, you don't have to heat that up, you don't, you know. The same thing with Spam. You can get these individual packages. These I like. All of these things I like is chicken creations. All of them I like because they're serving for one. <laughs> and I can keep them for just about ever, at least a year anyway. They don't require refrigeration. Uh, they're tasty. You could throw them together with some crackers and have a really good meal. Throw some pickles or relish or whatever on top of that that you also don't need to keep refrigerated. And make yourself something really good. When you're going shopping, get produce if you want produce. But make sure it's not from the refrigerated section, like for instance, potatoes uh, you can get, you know, things like that. Uh, and so you don't have to be totally constrained. I mean, I do things like sardines. It's really good, very healthy. There's these packages. This is service for one. These don't last 25 years, but they're good for if you're shopping, you want something to eat, you're, you don't have to heat that up, you don't, you know. The same thing with Spam. You can get these individual packages. These I like. All of these things I like is chicken creations. All of them I like because they're serving for one. <laughs> and I can keep them for just about ever, at least a year anyway. They don't require refrigeration. They're tasty. You could throw them together with some crackers and have a really good meal. Throw some pickles or relish or whatever on top of that that you also don't need to keep refrigerated. And make yourself something really good. When you're going shopping, get produce if you want produce. But make sure it's not from the refrigerated section, like for instance, potatoes uh, you can get. You know, things like that. As far as meats go, if you're into meats, you can always do things like pepperoni and uh, some of the, the summer sausages and things like that, that also don't require refrigeration. If you want to see me cook some of these emergency packages, these kind, the ones that last 25 years that are freeze dried, let me know in the comments section below because I haven't tried them, I just bought them because I'm, I don't know, I guess a prepper of some sort. I, I feel that I've got to have food in the house even though I couldn't eat it all in a year. So, I have them. Uh, but if you'd like to see me cook it, give me a holler. I have a, a, a video that I did on camping and the foods and that kind of stuff that I brought with me, so I will put it up here, up here, wherever it is that it shows up on the video. I tell you though, when I get into the to the cargo trailer, when I start traveling in the cargo trailer, I believe that I'm going to really miss my microwave. Not only my microwave, but my air fryer. Definitely going to miss my air fryer. Well, I have an Instant Pot, which I haven't been cooking in lately. I don't know why, but I haven't. But I've got two stories for you about pressure cookers because I'm thinking that when I'm when I'm traveling I'm going to want to cook something in the pressure cooker 
at this point I haven't got a clue what but so I figured I'd get me a small pressure cooker I'm still looking for a small one because these things are huge you know and it's only me but when let me tell you some stories okay when I was a little kid probably 70 years ago you know ish okay my mother used to use a pressure cooker uh, and she would cook beans in them the thing is is that one day this pressure cooker I don't know how she did it but it exploded I don't know how she she got it to explode because you gotta really work at opening the pressure cooker when it's pressurized but somehow she did well we had beans all over the ceiling all over the walls all over the stove on the floor everywhere 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 it was crazy we lived on the first floor in the projects I climbed out the window and disappeared because I wasn't ready to clean up all of those beans at any rate myself about 45 years ago I had a pressure cooker I was building a house out in the middle of nowhere we were cooking on a campfire at the time uh, because the kitchen wasn't finished yet and we were still building the house okay so I was just cooking some beans and at the time that I thought it was done I depressurized it and did everything I was supposed to in order to open this pot. I could not get the pot open. I could not get the lid off. I tried for two days to try and get that lid open. Finally I took a hammer to it <laughs> and tried to get the lid open. You know, I said I handle them banging, you know, trying to get this thing open. Never got it open. I think what it was is I just forgot to oil the rubber ring. At the time they used the rubber rings on the inside to seal the lid of, of the pressure cooker. Well, the beans and everything in there just glued that sucker together forever. It was, <laughs> it was, it was together forever, you know. <clears throat> now they make the rings out of silicone, but you still, I believe, have to oil them. So make sure you oil it before you try and cook something in it. Never did eat those beans, never got that pot open, I just ended up throwing the whole pot away. <laughs> I'm not afraid of, of pressure cookers, a lot of people are. Um, but so now I'm still looking for just a really small one to kind of augment my cooking possibilities. So it comes down to First, you need to choose what style of cooking you like. What are you going to cook, first of all? What do you like to cook? And then decide on your style. Now, of course, this all goes with what your choice of what kind of rig you have. So you have to put all of those consideration into consideration. And know that there is a way to do this, and there's a way to do it healthy, and there's a way to do it wholesomely without getting crazy <laughs> you know so I hope that helped you know showed you that there are things out there that you can do okay so as for Rowley the Rowley report Rowley's okay he's still loving he's still very protective he still barks at golf carts and he's still crazy running around like a maniac So thanks for subscribing and watching, and thanks to those who bought us a treat. Okay? If you'd like to help us get on the road, see the links below. I have affiliate links also talking about showing you the the different foods, that freeze-dried foods and things like that. They are Amazon affiliates. Please share my videos and subscribe to Adventures with Raven and Raleigh. This is a really new channel. I could use your help. Okay. Also like and ring the notification bell if you would. Okay. See you next Friday at 5 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time or Pacific Time. Take care of you and yours and blessed be.